Today we're going to try something new. We're going to try some of these sawdust bricks. I picked these up at Tractor Supply. They were about uh, $4.30 for a package of six, which is comparable to the price of firewood. And we're going to see how they work in my little Grizzly Cubic Mini wood stove. Now my wood stove will only take uh, logs that are up to six inches long, so I'm going to need to cut these down. So I'm going to get started on that now. We'll cut them down and then I'll put them in my trash can that I use for my firewood storage. I'm cutting these down into two pieces like this so that I can put those in the stove like that and then elevate that piece like that. That way I can get a fire under it and get it burning. I know you wouldn't think it's nice and cool out here, judging by the way I'm dressed. But it's down in the low 40s today. And let's go give these fire bricks a good workout. See how they work. I do have a little vacuum that I could be using. But I find this little dustpan, this little broom works just fine. A lot less noise, a lot less electricity used. Clean out the firebox and what we used last night. So as I mentioned, this is my Grizzly Cubic Mini Wood Stove. This is sold by a company up in Canada called the Cubic Mini Wood Stoves. And this is a really good little wood stove if you've got a place, uh, I'd say maybe 300 square feet or less. My little tiny house is a little under 200 square feet. And I find that a lot of times I have to open a window a little bit when I get this thing roaring. Alright, let's take and put ourselves a couple blocks in here. I haven't tried this before myself, so you guys are getting to see the inaugural example of how this works. Okay, so you can see I've got myself two blocks on the bottom and a block on top. And I'll take one of these, let's take two of them, little fire starters. I've got these little fire starters. These are like uh, paraffin 
impregnated fire starters. You could use, uh, you know, stuff like sawdust and um, a little bit of diesel fuel, but I like these because they don't have any inherent smell to them. Put that in there on one side, light another one, put it in here on the other side. Open up the vents. And we'll let it get started. So now let's take a look at the wood stove and see how we're doing. Okay, the two little fire starters are doing their job. They're toasting away at the fire bricks. Close the door a little bit to keep the smoke inside. You can see the fan on top has not started turning yet, so the box is not hot enough to begin drawing its own air through. So I still have the door cracked a little bit. Let's let this sit here and uh, work for a little while and we'll check back in. Okay, so the fan has started turning. That means the box has gotten hot enough to engage the thermoelectric fan. I just use the wet wipes to clean up. They can go right in there and we'll stick us some water on to be able to have some nice coffee here pretty soon. So I think while this is uh, burning away here, we should go in the kitchen while we're waiting to see how this works. I'm going to time how long the logs last so we get a fairly good idea of how they compare to traditional firewood and what the expense would be for these on sort of a long-term basis in a little stove like this. So let's go in the kitchen and prepare ourselves something good to eat. I've got my silicon baking pans which uh, desperately need to be cleaned out. You probably hear we're operating the uh, generator in the background. I need the generator in order to cut the wood a little while ago and I also need the generator to be able to run my little electric oven thing. So and also while the generator is working, it's also charging the batteries here in the house. And since it's a overcast day today, it's a good day to be charging the batteries because they're not gonna charge very well with no sunshine. We'll kind of dry these off, get them ready for some good cooking. You'll notice I don't use paper towels. I use these, I guess they're called micro wipes or something like that, kind of microfiber cloths. I just don't like using paper towels because of all of the waste that comes from, from using paper towels. And these are pretty easy just to throw into the laundry anytime you need to. Alright, we'll stick these aside. We'll get started on our cranberry orange muffins. See what we need to preheat our oven to. 400 degrees. Let's take care of that. So this is my little new wave oven. It will also work as an air fryer and various other. Okay, so the directions here say we need a half a cup of water, a half a cup of vegetable oil, 
and two eggs for each box. So I've got four eggs over here. And I've got some vegetable oil. So let's get down to it. I think I can do both of these at the same time and not make a disaster out of it. The boxes I'll put in the compost pile. They'll break down good eventually. But these plastic bags, of course, won't do very well in the compost pile. It's getting nice in here. That little stove is working good. Okay. Put the four eggs in here. Eggs will go in the compost pile too, so we'll just put them in the box. Alright, now let's do our water. Was that again a half a cup of water? So a full cup of water for two boxes. And uh, half a cup of vegetable oil, so that would be a cup of vegetable oil for two boxes. Amazing how you have to use that first grade mathematics all the time. Just can't get away from what you learned in first grade. And I think we wait to add the uh, cranberries until later on. Stir together water, eggs, oil, muffin mix until blended, then stir in the cranberries, okay? All right, I am not a cook. You guys who are cooks are probably sitting there laughing your, uh, well, let's call it tails off. Probably be a little easier if I had a mixer but I don't. Now we'll work on the cranberries. And it says to put these in undrained. Looks pretty nice, eh? Now it says to gently fold these into there. I have a buddy in Tennessee who keeps asking me for cooking babe videos. Encouraging me with ideas for videos. Well, I have some of those aluminum baking pans. But I decided to give these, uh, these silicon pans a try after watching a couple of couple of YouTube videos about them and I've been using them for a couple of years and they seem to work pretty good. And I do have some silicon baking cups that I can use also but I find that I really don't need them when, when using these, uh, these silicon baking trays. The cups do give you something to carry your, your muffin a little bit more convenient. And for that reason, sometimes I do use them. All right, let's see how long these should stay in there. 400 degrees, 12 standard muffins, 18 to 20 minutes. Now these muffin trays are a little challenging in the sense that they're flexible. But if you're careful with them, it works just fine. You can get a little tray and put under them, but I find that I can be, I can be careful enough and not dump them on the ground. So we'll let those sit there and cook, 
and we'll prep our next selection of muffins. I'm sure you guys who know how to cook have plenty of advice for us guys that uh, are challenged by boiling water. So if you would like, you're welcome to leave any advice that you have down in the comments and I'll be able to learn from your uh, vast experience. Now these won't all be uniform size, but that's okay. I can eat things that are not uniform. The muffins that are in there are doing fine. We're down to 13 minutes. So we'll take a break here for a little while and we'll be back when the first muffins come out and we put the second muffins in. Okay, let's take a look at how we're doing here with uh, bricks. Wow, they're doing real well. I'm going to throttle this down a little bit by closing the vents. There's just no need for it to be quite this warm. My pot of coffee is doing just fine. So I'm pretty pleased so far. Okay, so these are our muffins. They look pretty good. I'm going to let them cool for a little while. The ones in the back are a little bit more done than the ones in the front. So they probably could have used for a rotation in the middle of the cooking process. But I think overall they look pretty good. So we're at about the two hour mark with this one set of fire bricks. And it looks like it's starting to break up a little bit, but we've still got a tremendous amount of heat coming off of it. And I'm pretty impressed. It's keeping the tiny house plenty warm and it's doing a good job and it's not making a lot of uh, mess or anything like that. So, so far I like them. So 18 minutes appears to be just about right. And like I mentioned in the first tray, they could use with a rotation in the middle because the ones in the back are a little bit more done than the ones in the front but pretty much overall it's pretty close to how done they are. So we'll put that down as a roaring success. I'm going to clean up the dishes here and then we'll come back and do a final evaluation on the fire bricks for the wood stove. So this one brick has been going for a little over three hours now. It is now broken down and uh, kind of fine pieces in here, but it's still burning very well. There's still plenty of heat coming off of it. My coffee pot is good and warm. The pieces down on the bottom have stayed together as solid pieces. The tiny house is very comfortable. I've got three windows open back here to get a little bit of fresh air in and I've got a window in the bathroom open to get a little bit of cross ventilation. I'd say outside is probably in the high 40s, so I really don't need the wood stove right now, but it's still making it very comfortable in here. So I'm going to sit here by the wood stove and I'm going to enjoy my drink. And I'm going to enjoy the fire and I'm going to enjoy the muffins that we made together. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Mooseville Off-Grid. 
If you would, please give us that thumbs up icon if you have any questions about cooking or suggestions, or if you have any questions about the Grizzly wood stove. I do have a number of videos on my channel about this wood stove. This particular video was primarily about these fire bricks, these sawdust compressed bricks, and I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, I think I've gotten a great value out of these sawdust bricks. They work very well on this little stove. So I'm going to enjoy my muffins here. I hope you have a good day. Uh, I look forward to seeing you back here again on Moose Villa Off Grid very soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye. These are good. They're done all the way through. Have a nice brown covering. There's probably things you could add to them to make them even better, but I'm not that good of a cook. I like them right out of the box.